Good morning everyone and welcome to the homestead. So what are we working on today? Come join me. Hi everyone and welcome. Today is a traditional thing that I do every year and this is the time of the year where I plant my sweet peas. So sweet peas can be planted as soon as you possibly can get in the dirt. So we're going to plant my sweet peas today and I got to fill in some dirt here. We're going to find some wooden sticks to make a teepee. That's how I make my teepees. Why spend money for trellises when you can make them for free? And we're going to plant our sweet peas right here. This is a project that you can do no matter where you live. Just find a pot that's deep enough and plant some sweet peas. And this too will be a loving tradition that you're going to start at your home. It's a beautiful day to do some planting. Now, it's still very much cold weather and it's springtime, but it's a perfect time to plant sweet peas. Sweet peas are my favorite flower. They're highly scented. So today we're gonna plant some sweet peas. And what I like to do is, I like to scatter my seeds all around this little teepee that I made with wooden stakes. And all I have to do now is get some potting soil and fill the top. And there you go. It's as easy as that. Take some potting soil. Make sure we have about an inch of dirt over top of them. Now we've got beautiful flowers. Come May. And when they start to germinate, they look just like peas, the sprouts of peas. Now I'll show you what else we're going to do. My other special flowers that I love are Johnny Jump Ups. As you know, I love Peter Rabbit and I love Peter Rabbit Gardens. Johnny Jump Ups was a favorite in Peter Rabbit storybooks. And I love the Johnny jump ups. So we're going to do the same thing. Now we're just going to scatter them all throughout. I'll put it like that. Then I'm just going to take some potting soil once again and we're going to just do it very lightly. The tinier the seed, the less depth you want to put it. That's why I tell people who have herbs, when you want to plant herb seeds, do not plant them very deep. The more shallow that you plant them, the better. Now, if you have a big seed, then you want to plant it deeper. But herbs, you only want to plant really shallow. So now we have sweet peas that are going to climb up this trellis, this teepee that I made. And we also have the Johnny Jump Ups. So this is one raised bed. Come June, when the flowers are about finished, then I'm going to plant something else in this bed. Oh, just like that, we got one bed finished. The next thing we're going to plant is some echinacea. A subscriber, Vernie, gave me some of these seeds and so we are going to plant them. Now the echinacea is a perennial so you can plant that in the early spring as well. We're going to go ahead and put some topsoil. We're going to go ahead and put some potting soil on top and now this planter is finished too. So today we're going to make some rose hip salve and it's a really simple procedure. We're going to take some coconut oil, some rose hips, and some beeswax and we're going to make some really good antioxidant salve that would be good for healing any kind of cuts and wounds. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get some coconut oil. So we're roughly going to use about two cups. Now coconut oil melts really quickly 
And to make my salve, I do equal amounts of oil and beeswax because I like a hard salve. I do not like a salve that melts quickly, especially for the summer months. We're going to go ahead and we're going to melt this coconut oil and then we're going to go ahead and add about a cup of our rose hips. So the coconut oil is melted. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add about a cup of the rose hips. These are dried rose hips. So that's a cup. Let me see how many more I want. I actually want to add more. So it's a cup and a half. We're going to go with two cups. I like my infused oil to be very strong. So there we go. We have two cups of the rose hips and the coconut oil. And I'm not sure how much coconut oil is. I'd go with two cups. Now we're going to simmer this for about an hour. We really want to get the rose hips soft so they release all of their quality properties in them that are healing. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to put this on the stove as a simmer. We don't want to boil it. We want to just have it as a simmer for about an hour to two hours. I'll get back to you when we go ahead and strain it. Alright, so we have the rose hips in the coconut oil and now it's been simmering for a couple hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we have to strain it. So I take a coffee filter and we're going to pour it into the coffee filter into the funnel. As soon as it's totally strained, we are going to measure how much of the oil it is, and to that I will use the same amount of beeswax. What you can do is you can use any kind of essential oils that you would like. So if you want tea tree oil, you can use that. That would be fighting any kind of infection. If you want to have a sleepy time, like lavender, you could use that. That will help you with sleeping. It's whatever you want, or you can just have it with the rose hips and the coconut oil. We're going to go ahead and make sure we get it all. To that, we are going to add two cups of beeswax, and we're going to add it, and we are going to melt it. So that's a half and one half and two. Now we're going to go ahead and stir this to the beeswax is totally melted. If I can't melt it totally this way, I will put it in a pan with some hot water until it's all melted. We have equal parts of the oil and equal parts of the beeswax. Now I'm going to put a little bit of lavender essential oil in it. I'm going to go ahead and put about 40 drops. I like to have a strong scented salve. This will be a sleepy time salve. Rose hips are high in antioxidants and vitamin C, so what I do is I oftentimes will put this on my feet. Your feet is what is the secret to a longevity of your body because your feet is where any impurities or any stresses of your life, they all go to your feet. We're going to go ahead and we are going to blend this together. It smells amazing. The actual rose hips has a beautiful scent to it. I'm going to put this lid on it because it's going to make it easy to pour. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pour it into our salve containers. And this is what I'm using today. I love these lids. These lids are amazing. These black lids that I have here. These black lids that I have, they are amazing. 
And no, they do not leak. Just like that, we have a salve that would cost quite a few dollars in a high-end herbal store. And for us, it didn't cost us hardly anything. So this is all of the salve. I can go put this in my closet and this will last me a good year to a year and a half. I never have problems with my salves getting old. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope you give it a try and make yourself some rose hip salve today. Your skin will thank you for it.